Hi everyone and welcome back. If you're new here, I'm Casket and in today's video I'll be making some 1890s cycling bloomers but with a 1990s goth twist. I recently got the book The Keystone Guide to Jacket and Dress Cutting and while I was flipping through I spotted this pattern for some breeches. I had to go at drafting it but it ended up looking a little bit weird, like there was way too much fabric around the bum area. After asking for some help on Facebook though, I found out that they were most likely for riding horses, so that explains it, they don't want them riding down or anything at the back. That did get me thinking about cycling bloomers though, so I went on a hunt and luckily I found a free pattern by Black Snail Patterns. Now they do say that they're Edwardian, but I reckon I can make them work for Victorian as well. I don't think there's that much difference. From looking at pictures it looks like the Victorian ones are maybe just a little bit poofier. Now, because it's me, I can't just make some regular cycling bloomers. It's not my style. <laughs> I did see quite a few videos recently, like over the past few months, that were very 90s nostalgia kind of themed. And that did get me thinking back to my teen years wearing pants that I could fit two of me in and listening to Typo Negative and Slipknot. So I am going to make some 1890s cycling bloomers but in the style of 90s goth pants. I'm talking eyelets, metal zips, straps, all the top stitching. I think this is going to be really fun so time to make a mock-up. Okay, so mock-up number one isn't too bad. It seems to fit quite nicely around the waist and at the front. The side seams are hitting in the right place and I'm liking the way the button-up bits look. It is a bit kind of baggy around the butt area though. They're definitely designed to be worn underneath a skirt, I think. They're also quite long and not quite tight enough around my calf. I don't really have much in the way of calf muscles anyway, so I was expecting to have to take that in a bit. But the length is going to have to be altered, I think. Okay, so changes that I need to make. For the back, on this panel here, it curves outwards. What I need to do is make it look more like a more modern type of pant and have it curve like that. I know it was the style back then to have all that extra room for riding a bike, riding horses and stuff, but I'm hoping to be able to wear these out and all that excess fabric at the back isn't the most flattering I don't think. So that's definitely going to need to be changed. I'm going to take two approaches. I've got like two ideas. I've got my block pattern but that is for like 1940s style shorts. Like I've said before I did originally try to just draft the entire pattern from that book but things were getting a bit weird That's so that's why I've ended up using a commercial pattern. But I'm wondering if I can kind of use it to help me get the dimensions right for getting this curve. We shall see, I might be overcomplicating things. The other thing is, lengthwise, I think I need to take off about three inches because they are very, very long. I'm also going to make them a little bit wider as well, just because all the images that I've seen of late Victorian like breeches and bicycle bloomers and stuff, they do tend to be a bit fuller. That works perfectly for this project though as well because 90s like new metal like goth kind of pants you could fit three people down one leg <laughs> so I think this is going to work out. So I need to do mock up number two, make all those changes and then I will get back to you. Okay, well first off apologies for the noise, there is currently a massive storm going on and it is chucking it down and blowing a gale, so that's what that is. But yeah, what I did was I used this book, I took some of the instructions from the trousers 
to draft this curve and I'm going to use this as a base for altering this pattern piece. We shall see if the curve is actually correct or not. If it's not, then I can just make some alterations again. I did try putting on my 1940s uh, shorts pattern over it, but it's not high, they're not high waisted enough, so the angle wasn't quite right. I will use that though if this doesn't work. As you can see, mock up number two is pretty good, but the waist has gone way too high at the back. To fix this, I cut across the pattern just under the darts and brought it down. Now, because the darts are way too close to the centre back, I did also redraw those further inwards. Right, I've got everything cut out now. I've got my, my other pockets. This is my back pocket. This is my side pocket, which is going to have a little pleat like that. So I think it is time to start cutting out the fashion fabric. I laid out my pattern pieces and marked everything out in chalk. I marked all my darts and stitched those first so I wouldn't have to worry about the marks rubbing off. I also surged all my raw edges. Next I stitched on the facings and button stays. Okay, so I've just stitched on my facings and my button stays. And for the facings, basically, I folded over a seam allowance worth, then stitched along. And what I need to do now is just clip into this. So that this bit can lay flat and this can all be ironed over. And fold this bit over by a half inch. And then fold it back on itself. That is one button facing done. Okay, 
it's the same again for the ones at the bottom of the leg. Just fold over by a half inch, turn it down, then fold over and pin in place. So for the button stays, what I did was I stitched along one of the outside edges, clipped my corner and then folded that inside out, well right side out. I then stitched it to the pants along one side. So what I need to do with this now is clip the corner again fold it to the inside and just fold in all my worn edges that all then gets ironed flat and it will be stitched along here. I stitched the fronts to the backs, then added two rows of top stitching to the side seams. I moved on to the pockets. Now that I've done my decoration on my back pockets, I need to actually put them on. So this edge has been finished, that's turned over. What I'll be doing is folding these edges in and top stitching around. The great thing about doing the pocket over it like this is it doesn't matter if my darts are a little bit pointy because nobody will ever see them. Okay, so we've got one pocket on and we've got some top stitching done. Got my straps and off camera I stuck some eyelets into some twill tape. Probably not the best and most sturdy thing but it's going to be sewn flat along the back there and along the front there. The straps are also going to need some eyelets putting in. These are going to be some of the smaller ones that I've been using on my corsets. So I can do them with the pliers so there's nowhere near as much hammering. I then have more pockets as well. I've got one that goes in the middle, I've got a little flap and this is going to be folded like that. So it'll be a nice neat small pocket but with a lot of room and then that just goes on top like that and I'll have a button to go there. 
I've also got another pocket for the front. What is going to happen with this one is I've got a back piece, then I have got, if I can find my pieces, got a bit that goes there and a bit that goes there and then there's going to be a zip. And the idea behind this is the zip portion is going to be a pocket that's between these two layers and they're going to leave this side open so I've got another pocket going in there. A little complicated, it may or may not work, <laughs> we shall see. So I'm going to attach all my straps and my pockets and then I will get back to you. Making these cycling bloomers got me thinking about the history of women wearing pants. I knew about Amelia Bloomer, a women's rights activist who tried to popularise the wearing of pantaloons or Turkish trousers in the early 1850s. I also knew that bifurcated garments for women became popular for cycling in the 1890s. What I didn't know though was that working women had been wearing pants since the 1840s in England. During the Industrial Revolution, more and more women moved away from the home and into factories and mines to help make ends meet. In the 1840s, there was a growing concern about children working in mines, and a commission was set up to investigate. During these investigations, the men were shocked to see women doing men's work. Not only that, they were stripped to the waist and wearing pants, just like any man working in those hot and dusty conditions. While the commission could have focused on the back-breaking work, the extortionately low wages or the dangerous conditions, they and the media's attention went straight to what women were wearing. The Mines and Collieries Act was passed in 1842 and banned women, girls and boys under 10 from working in mines. Despite this, loopholes meant that women continued to work above ground at the collieries. These women were known as the pit brow lasses and they continued to work and wear pants until the Harrington No. 10 mine closed in 1972. It was now finally time to stitch the two sides of my bloomers together. I made sure to capture the ends of the straps on the inside of each leg. Okay, so the vast majority of the bloomers are done now. I've just got to do the waistband and the cuff bit that goes around the knee. So for the waistband, something that isn't in the pattern that I'm adding are little belt loops. So these are just a simple strip of fabric that I've zigzagged the edge and then folded over and stitched that down so it's flat. So what I need to do now is sandwich these between the two waistband layers and then stitch it down. Okay, so even though I'm not actually going to be sewing the bottom edge, I am still pinning this down just so that 
these bits don't go whoop like that as I'm sewing them. I attached the outside edge of the waistband to the top of the bloomers. I then folded over the inside and stitched in the ditch to secure it. Okay, so I have added my gathering stitches along the bottom of each pant leg and now I'm just going to gather them down and add the knee strap cuff thing and then after that it's just going to be for things like adding buttons. I'm debating putting like a little skull on the back pocket because that was such a like, late 90s thing to do, to have like a little patch on the back of your pants. I might have some like thick enough white that I could do it. I'll have to see. <laughs> That's really growing on me now, I'm going to have to put a skull on the back of these. I added my buttons and then the bloomers were finished. These turned out so good. I seriously do love them. They're just ridiculous. <laughs> True, they're not perfect. I did mess up the top stitching in quite a few areas. Also, twill tape probably wasn't the best option for doing the eyelet strips. They ended up just being a bit weird and a bit too mobile, I think. But at the end of the day, we're talking about 1990s goth Victorian cycling bloomers. Who's to say what's perfect and what's not? I really love all the little details. They really work to give them those 90s goth pants feel. I'm also super happy that I did the skull patch on the back. Especially considering I'm not a big embroidery person, I'm well chuffed with how it turned out. I hope you think these are as fun as I do. I think I've done a really good job of capturing the essence of each item of clothing and mashing them together. If you enjoyed this video and fancy giving it a little like, it'd be very much appreciated. I love reading all your comments and suggestions, so let me know what you thought of the project down below.
And if you'd like to see more videos of me trying to make things, then why not subscribe and hit that bell so you'll be notified next time I upload a video. I do my very best to upload a new video every two weeks. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!